हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकलेट एजुकेशन चैनल सो दिस इज द रिविजन पार्ट ट्वेल्व वीडियो फॉर द गेट इकोलॉजी एंड इवोल्यूशन पेपर हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट कंसेप्ट एंड वी विल ट्राई टू सॉल्व द प्रीवियस इयर्स क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस गेट पेपर सो गेट रेडी विथ योर नोट्स सो दैट यू कैन राइट डाउन ऑल द कंसेप्ट सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट so here comes our first question the question is animal species can vary in whether the dispersal is more likely among male offspring or among the female offspring or similar between the sexes so the question is asking dispersal in birds and mammals is most commonly what kind of so here respectively word is used that means first you have to tell about the birds then about the mammals so here are the options i will wait for certain seconds then i will reveal the correct answer so here the correct answer will be option number a yes the dispersal in birds is female biased and here in case of mammals it is male bias so option a will be correct but we should know the concept behind it whether the dispersal the sexes between the differences so we'll know one by one in the next slide so here comes the sexed bias dispersal so what is this thing this concept you should know and write it down so here in this concept the individuals of one sex stay or return to their natal site so one sex that means it can be male or it can be female from any of the individual which will stay at their site that is the natal site or group and the other one will be moving to the other side for the breeding that means to stay at one place one sex will be staying to breed whereas the other individual will have to disperse for breeding purpose but here what is female biased and male biased so here this thing is already given in the question where it says that when the dispersal is more likely among male offspring that means when the male partner is moving that means it is dispersing from one place to another that will be called as male biased kind of phenomena whereas female offspring when the female partner is moving or dispersing for the breeding purpose it will be called as female offspring or female biased nature in that individual so i hope it is clear in case of birds the female are dispersing in order to breed whereas in case of mammals the male partner is moving or dispersing for the breeding purpose so i hope you have noted down all this thing let's move on to the next question so here comes our next question the next question is of the following which one is the most direct measure of the darwinian fitness so this is from the genetic portion you should read every options very very carefully so here some of you will be confused among the options but here the correct option will be what it will be option number b lifetime reproductive success yes it is one of the most direct measure for the darwinian fitness and what is that thing actually so this term that is lifetime reproductive success is the number of offspring that reach their reproductive age that is the lifetime reproductive success which suggest about the darwinian fitness and one of the most direct measure let's move on to the next question so the next question is on our screen the question is which one of the following shows the highest degree of endemism so endemism you all will be knowing the organisms which are constrained or which are located in a particular place which are found in a particular location they are called as endemic species and that feature is called as endemism so here options are birds of the himalayas mammals in the central india frogs in the western ghats or trees in the gangetic basin so here the correct option will be option number c yes the frog diversity is very very high in the western ghats and the endemism is highest among all these because 87% of the frogs in the western ghats are endemic and found nowhere else on the planet so this thing you should be knowing they are not found anywhere on the planet 87 of them are only found in the western ghats they are endemic and here you should also know that for your information i will tell you they are of order anura the frogs are having 
which order they are of anura and what are anura anura means tailless so frogs are not having tail that's why they are called anura order organism let's move on to the next question so the next question is the marginal value theorem in the optimal foraging theory examines which one of the following foraging decisions so here are the options i'll not read you should read and i will reveal the answer after certain seconds so here this marginal value theorem it examines how long to stay in a patch of food for the organism for the foragers and this concept i have discussed very very in depth so you can check the link given in the i button where you can know about the marginal value theorem it is also important so let's move on to the next question so here is our question the question is which one of the following mendelian disorders is influenced by the diet so here are the options cystic fibrosis hemophilia phenylketonuria or thalassemia so here the correct option will be option number c phenylketonuria so these mendelian disorders are very very important i am repeatedly saying that in the gate ecology and evolution paper you should know each and everything about the mendelian disorder how they are taking place in the organism what are the effect what are the effects of those orders disorders so you should know and i will make a separate video regarding this so now we will know about this mendelian disorder phenylketonuria how it is influenced by the diet so this disease is commonly called as pku that means phenylketonuria short form is pku it is an inherited disorder so it is transfer from one generation to another and what it happens it increases the levels of an amino acid in our body which amino acid you should note down particularly very important phenylalanine in the blood of our body so if this disease is inherited from the parents to the offspring then the amino acid level of phenylalanine will be higher in concentration and what it will cause it can cause brain and nerve damage so these are the effects of this disease it is an inability to metabolize phenylalanine so what happens is the phenylalanine in our body it is metabolized but if this disease is present then this will not be metabolized and its concentration will increase and it can even cause brain and nerve damage if it is remaining untreated so what are the treatment so treatment is a strict diet with limited protein so these proteins are increasing the amount of phenylalanine in our body so that's why there is a strict recommendation of diet with limited protein for these kind of patients and here low protein diet and phenylalanine restricted diet as well as aspartame restricted diet yes phenylalanine diet we should avoid as well as aspartame restricted diet so what is this aspartame it is actually an artificial non saccharide so it is an artificial sweetener which is used in the bakeries and in the other industries so what happens is it is actually sugar substitute but how it is concerned with the phenylketonuria yes it is very much concerned because it is a methyl ester of aspartic acid and phenylalanine dipeptide so phenylalanine and aspartic acid methyl ester this dipeptide is aspartame so that's why it is also suggested to restrict that in our diet when we are having this kind of disorder so i hope you have written down all these things let's move on to the next question the next question is which one of the following mammalian dna regions exhibits the highest level of sequence variation the options are homeobox transcription factor binding domain hox genes mitochondrial d loop region or histone protein encoding genes so here the correct option will be option number c mitochondrial d loop region is the region in the mammals where it is having the highest level of sequence variation so you should know why this thing is happening and we'll move on to the next slide to know yes this is the structure of the mitochondrial dna and we are concerned with the d loop in the mitochondrial dna so this is the d loop found in the mitochondrial dna and we should note down all these things this loop is having 1 1 2 4 base pair bp means base pairs in size and most importantly it is a non coding region 
but it acts as a promoter yes you should mention it acts as a promoter for both heavy as well as light strands of the mitochondrial dna and it also contains essential transcription and replication elements so all these things together makes it more variable and here this d loop region is a hot spot for the mitochondrial dna alteration and it contains two hyper variable regions so these terms for you it will be new for some of them you should note down what are these two hyper variable regions in the d loop region they are hvr1 hvr2 so it has no functional genes but it accumulates mutations at rapid rate so it is useful for the ancestral studies so you should note down all these things it is a non coding region but it is having the promoter for both heavy and light strands of mitochondrial dna contains essential transcription and replication elements it has hotspot region with two hyper variable regions that are hvr1 and hvr2 so i hope you have learned something new from here you have enjoyed the video if you have enjoyed don't forget to subscribe the channel to get all further updates you can also join our telegram group learn for the environment link will be provided in the description for the regular quizzes and yes you can check this playlist that is for the gate ecology and evolution i'll provide that in the i button so that you can prepare well for the examination so stay calm believe in yourself and keep smiling see you guys in our next video